even a vaccine that had 50% efficacy would have significant benefit in terms of controlling the pandemic. Even when you take your child to a pediatrician, for example, the pediatrician is not going to tell you this vaccine is 90%, this vaccine is 50%, this vaccine is 60% efficacy. But that is actually the case. So if we look at the many vaccines that we use every day, none of them is a 100% vaccine. The very efficient vaccines are things like uh, measles and rubella vaccines. There are other vaccines where, like the rotavirus vaccine, which in India in its efficacy trial was about 55% efficacious. But we use the vaccine and what pediatricians are describing now is that they don't see as many diarrhea hospitalizations as they used to see before the vaccine was introduced. I think 50% was very reasonable as a, an estimated efficacy of a vaccine that is targeting a respiratory infection. But to expect every vaccine to perform exactly the same way is not going to be possible. We have to remember that a lot of the numbers that we get as headline numbers, 90%, 95%, 70%, really come from the fact that different trials are designed differently. So when we are comparing these trials and these numbers, this is not a head-to-head -head comparison that we have done. It's important to understand that even if we do want to immunize everybody in the country, it's not going to happen in a short time frame. So what the government may be prioritizing at the moment are the populations that are most in need and plans for others may evolve as we have a clearer sense of what the supply chain and the products might look like. So if you're not on the priority list, I think it's pretty likely in most parts of the world that you're unlikely to receive the vaccine until in some countries the end of 2021 and in other countries possibly well into 2022. Obviously, if you hear about somebody being very ill after potentially participating in a trial and having an adverse event, you will be worried and you're justified in that worry. Now, what would clarify the situation for you? It really would be a description of what happened in this particular case, a description of what is usually done in vaccine trials to make sure that participants are safe to describe the levels of oversight that are undertaken and to make it clear that in this rapid development of vaccines, there are no corners being cut where safety is concerned. The trials are being done like other trials are with very large numbers of people being tested. That said, I've frequently said that there is no drug or no vaccine that can be called 100% safe.